now diving topside. Adam flashes away yet again. This guy has been thrown out of the game consistently. Make it another time. They give it to Hunt Summer again. Now getting towards our next dragon in two minutes. Broken play with the engage here onto Ice. It's nice, but LeBron following through. Doesn't have the arrow, but does have the damage. Ice under turret, though. It's going to get bounced on Broken Blade doing it himself. Interesting game at the very least. But moving to match point to once again be in a grand final, to once again look for the fifth title in a row. It's your region's champions. It's your region's favorites. And after all of that, it is G2 who are in match point once again, looking to make a beeline for another grand final here in the LEC. But of course, we're hoping that BDS have something to say about it, uh, maybe replicating some of what we saw from them in game two. Um, after all that, we were so positive, and Broxa, I want to go to you first, because you said, yes, they finally woke up. This is the BDS that I wanted to see. Oh, they no. were hella boring before. What do you think now? Well, at least the game wasn't boring. It was great, <laughs> it yeah. It was a little different than I expected, but I think generally they came in with the same idea. They knew G2 was going to lane swap, but this time G2 was just one step ahead. Yeah, you wanted to talk about the lane swaps again, and uh, we got all the replays ready that are going to play behind you. So how was it different, or was it the same from what we saw back in game one? So I think in game one, BDS invaded on the bot side instead of top side. Now they walk top side to place a ward. What they were not aware of is the fact that Hans was already sitting under the top uh, tier one turret. Broken Blade has great acting skills, act like he walks <laughs> the top. BDS is spot lane, goes spot lane. By the time they realize what's going on, oh, Mickey doesn't even get spotted by the ward, by the way. So all of this is great. It's just great, great acting skills. Now Mickey stops. Poor, poor Adam from basing. Broken Blade even makes an appearance because, well, he has no reason to be bot lane. He couldn't farm there anyways. They pull Adam low. Not only do they take his flash, they tilt him out of his mind. And again, the bot lane, Jinx Lulu is supposed to sit bot and Sofa just falls further and further behind. Adam is just sitting AFK, unable to farm while Broken Blade keeps making plays as well. Yeah, one Broken Blade was kind of a jungler. Yeah, it's one of the good old things where it's like, back. well, top lane don't really matter. Don't care if I don't get any resources, especially when you play tank where your items are so cheap compared to some of the carries instead. But just the way that it continues to, there was really no way from how the game played out in the beginning and the first steps had come through. The acting level had to come through from BB. And the fact that Adam goes back to this, I think this oh, is really where that just breaks bit. that yeah. back. You don't have flash. You see the juicy wave on the tower and we've all been there. We want it. But you can't, you really can't. And as soon as this happened and it starts taking over, there's just really no way back. They've already succeeded with getting this Jinx ahead in a 2v2 lane, which normally she shouldn't have been able to. Um, but Aragon, you said he deserved it, right? Uh, well, okay. <laughs> Look, I sympathize. He's a top player and he wants the biggest R5 counter pick. But I have to say, this R5 for me, this Aatrox was really underwhelming you know you're going to end up in some kind of lane swap scenario. So you want to pick champions that are kind of self-sufficient in their own way and don't require a huge amount of resources because that's a realistic scenario. Yeah. Oh, right? so, sorry. Go Look ahead. at this. Broken Blade just acted like he was going to base top. In the meantime, G2 is sitting bot lane waiting for Ice to walk out. He finally get the, gets the lane assignment right and guess what? Insta gray screen, son. <laughs> and they just keep finding them, right? This is so tilting to play against, actually. Yeah, but it's not often that you go back in league and we talk about act ma out macro on this level. Like, usually we think about, oh, the mid to late game in terms of finding the real macro. Early game has been so much more set in stone ever since they did the turret changes to stop laning swap to come through. But with the entire demolish coming through from uh, Mickey as well and the Lulu to really bypass this change, they're just completely changing the game again. And it looks just amazing to watch. But I also just think that, you know, Adam is the kind of guy that used to bring a science that did exactly what yep. BB did this game, but then just played for bot lane and played for other lanes instead. And I would love to see as well if they can actually try and match that, even though it's something they haven't prepared. I would love to see the evolution of G2 because at the beginning of the day, I said, I don't see them evolve or not. In game two, I actually think they started BDS, pushing, yeah, right? BDS, sorry. Yeah. I actually think they started pushing the boundaries, but then G2 has just elevated it even further. So the point where you think you finally catch up, you realize you haven't at all. I have to say there's this Korean top laner, his name is Addy. He's really good at this whole low resource, I perma roam and can function without anything. And he plays champions like Rakan top lane, right? These kinds of champs that can function and be relevant and completely roam, rather than these kind of Adam picks, which require a lot of resources, are a direction you could go. My only problem is though, is Adam is not a flexible player. Right, and I don't think he'll pull out any kind of pick that can work in this uh, sort of so, situation. Can I clarify? Because we've in the past we've said he is kind of a flexible player in that within his own special pool of champions, it is different than what other people play. But you're saying that's actually not flexible if you look at kind of 
the pool that you're supposed to have if you get into a best of five. I, th I think he's flexible in the sense that if he has time to practice those picks, like he has a whole split to ramp up and learn, Nah, uh, Rumble, you know, Twisted Fate, these picks, then sure, he can be flexible by playoffs. But if some kind of meta evolves in a series where you suddenly need to Ooh. play super low self-sufficiency champions, he can't do that. I see. Well, I think the issue is also just, like GB said, G2 was just one step ahead. BDS was on the back foot the entire first 10 minutes of the game and just never had a chance to catch up. And I think now for them, they need to decide whether to ban the Jinx or whether they're comfortable in going a third time, or fourth time even, and seeing if now they can actually, you know, grasp what G2 is doing, not giving them the early lead level one. I mean, Vedius was in the room also talking to us and he was like, what about Jinx? Are you going to ban Jinx? What do you think? Yeah, but here's the thing as well. They haven't shown any priority on Seri, but surely in this meta yeah. as well, it's something that Han Summer could plan out to. I also think that G2 still has the Kog'Maw hidden in the background. We've already seen it throughout regular season. We know it was buffed, and I think that's something you can keep in the back too if you want to play these hyperscaling AD carries that can be bridged in the mid to late game. So my only problem with Zeri is that Han Summer has about 13 games on it, and that was all when Zeri was at her absolute peak and she was busted and he still has a really heavy negative win rate with it. So <laughs> I don't think that Hans is prepared to pick it out, and I think the Jinx is just going to be the avenue. Okay. Well, we're going to do the picks and bans, so we'll see if yeah. all of your uh, dreams come true. BDS did choose to go to the blue side, so every time they've been able to choose, it has been blue. That's been the trend. I just feel so bad for them because, you know, like we always <laughs> talk about how G2 is this mountain then they have to climb and then finally it feels they like they the get camp. so close <laughs> and it's like we're finally reaching them, we're doing it and then a game three like this comes out, but they have to bounce back. I think what's really going to define them as a team now is how quickly they can reset their mental because that game was over from the get-go. You have to overcome all the tilt, all the gameplay you've just seen and you have to pull out what you kind of did in game two. You know what they need to do? They need to get good and start competing. <laughs> oh we God. saw some signs of it, but no, there's still some way to go. Now, this time they are adapting. G2 continues spanning away the Siri instead of banning Callista. BDS takes away the Jinx. So we are going to have a bit of a different game here. I wonder if we're going to see the same rerun as game two, where BDS had blue side, where it's going to be volley into Lucy and Nami. Or if we're going to see the takeaway from the side of G2 Esports. It could be Aphelios okay, preemptively into the Lucy and Nami, because that is a good matchup in itself, because you have Lucian dashing into the Aphelios, which is what he loves. So I think that might be the adaptation for G2. Absolutely. I mean, he's hovering Trundle. I still think they could go Jax if they wanted to again. Rex I available for BB. So still a self-sufficient top laner that if you're doing this cross map thing again or lane swap thing again, he's still going to be fine. There's so much sustain in that lane too. And in terms of pairing up the Aphelios, well, one is, what, what is one of the best supports with Aphelios? Well, you guessed it right. It, it's Lulu if you want to go for it again. Yeah, I do think they are going to have more options with the Aphelios though. They could also look for something like, you know, a Tam Kench or a Fresh. And I think just locking in the hyper carry early, sticking to the same style while still keeping a lot of options for yourself available is great. Nice seeing the rumble coming out of BDS. This is the top matchup that you discussed a little yep. bit earlier, Aragorn. Yeah, so th this uh, this matchup, Rumble into Rek'Sai, it's one of the go-tos. Usually it's banned. Rumble and Jace are the go-tos, and you just sort of win. There's nothing that Rek'Sai can do. You can try and sustain through it, but there's, you're always susceptible to being all-in. So that's why And it, yeah, Adam is picking it. And if you look at his OPG, it's just Rumble City. The entire match history is pure Rumble. And I think you got a choice now. Lulu, Asol, what are we looking for here as well? There's still a Jax available to you that you can kind of just put into the Volley Bear if you're looking for it. I think G2 just have so many options to go for as a pick three in terms of where they want to take their direction in this draft. Yeah, I think that's the beauty of it. Like, regardless if you sack, you know, any of the free rolls, you're going to have picks available and they pretty much have control of this, this draft and can do whatever they want. They go for the Talia again wanting caps to have more of an early game presence and wanting to oh, fight back to this year doesn't take me over. a little on the side of bds because it's been a zier three games in a row and nuke for me he's a, a player to look out for but i mean the game state hasn't exactly been like that either but caps has had a much better series and i feel like maybe you should be willing to go do something different i mean maybe this is like it, it's, but it's the hard the zier is so strong nuke. i do agree yeah. with you right it, it's like what people often will say about nuke is the fact that he is the control mage player it's what's been working for bds but also, Caps is that guy. He runs Europe, and he has been throughout this entire year, and he'll continue to do so with the trend we have here. I think Ice is going to have a hard time now going into this second ban phase, because they're going to pinch his pool a lot with not having an AD picked already. Yeah, so they picked away Aphelios, because that's Ice's backup. Then they banned away Zeri and Lucian. Now they could ban away Varus, and then there's the Varus Ash lane gone as well. Ice is really, really pinched. He doesn't have that many to fall back on. I really wonder what he's going to pick. I mean, there's still a list of Renata available to yep. you. Renata often a oh. champion that's super nice into Aphelios here. So. So we, we saw it 
three weeks ago or maybe two weeks ago and it was not pretty. They tried to dive down bot side and Ice and Labrov did not look like a very comfortable Callista Renata, so I wouldn't want to see it again, but that's exactly... I mean, Varasash is still up. Well, T2 own, is so. basically looking BDS straight into the eyes and, you know, telling them to pick it again. <laughs> you know, showing that they're confident and going uh, for another round and just outsmarting them in the early game. And I mean, there's more enchanters than Lulu as well if they want to ban away the Lulu here. Like, there's still so many options, but you were, you were pointing out earlier as well that they, they're not necessarily going for the enchanter. There's still the Nautilus, there's still the engage they can go for, but like, it has to be in the back of their mind and therefore they also have to remove it in the second ban phase. I think... Rel, for sure, rises up in priority here as a flex potential. It's already still. banned in the first three. There you go. Support is Giga pinched as well. So, maybe some kind of hard engage support or preserve Come half by flex. For what is it? <laughs> well, Give I, me a guess. <laughs> I, I think they should log in the jungle here. Yeah. Smash the volley bear. You're going to have to at some point anyways. Then you have uh, an option later when okay. it comes to your support pick. Yep. Love this, by the way. Get that Sai on top, put Rek'Sai in the jungle. Rek'Sai is a monster jungle pick in solo queue right wow. now. So. Somewhere there's a riot, this balance the sign out. They're like, yes, we buffed it and they picked the jungle. It didn't go top lane, no, we I succeeded. It's one of the highest win rate junglers in the game in solo queue. But the problem is that often in pro play, it comes down to team fighting. It comes down to, you know, having some power to set up your carries in mid and late game. Rek'Sai generally not the strongest at doing that, but in the early game, he can match the volleyball to a certain extent. Hi, Sarah Khan, then. Setting up uh, for a very heavy dive composition now with Ice and Labrov with the Rakan and scaling in that regard. So. Do you think they've been bullied into doing that? Or was that the plan all Yeah, along? they're not, not as oppressive this time. Maybe okay. that's exactly what they're thinking. Yeah. Um, it's quite interesting with the Scion pick. This might indicate yeah, full lane swap again. Um, the Scion into Rumble isn't a great isolated matchup. So it is more of a team composition pick. And it's BB saying he's going to be a team player this time around. I mean, that and Rumble got picked so early. They set yeah. up the flex. I love this. I love this from Mickey because this sets up two scenarios where you still have the enchantment where you have the lane swap scenario going for you, but even if you play the two versus two, you now win the 2v2 in bot lane as well, because as a Rakan player, if you've ever tried to play against Jenna, she destroys your life. You don't get to W in there. So hard to find that engage. Even when you get into the mid to late game, you often have to rely on flanks. So Mickey now busting out a Jenna still pairs up so well with the Aphelios that really allows them to have multiple avenues covered. I think this is what separates a good team from a great one as well. It seems like BDS fought, they knew what was coming up until the very end where the Rek'Sai is being flexed into the jungle, they picked Janna to counter all the hard engage coming out of BDS and all of a sudden with the 4-5, G2 finds himself at a really solid advantage going into last game. I mean, or potentially guys... last game, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> right. here. Do you guys remember Nuke in the beginning of today where he was saying like, there's only so much you can flex with yeah. in this patch, there's yeah. only so much creativity you, you can bring out. Nah. Well, newsflash, never say that against G2. Never do indeed. Um, wow, unbelievable. I'm really happy with the way Everyone was so excited about this draft. I think it indicates how happy we are with it. So let's see if G2 closes it out right here, right now, or if BDS bring us to Silver Scrape. Thank you very much, Shox. Ladies and gentlemen, getting into what could be our last game. But as BDS throw a spanner in the works, we find out if it's going to be enough through the strong 2v2 aggression bot or through Adam in the top side, maybe having a bit of agency. The last game was shell-shocking for BDS. And so they have to recover. I hope they reset. I hope they de-stress because it was a stressful one just even to watch. But going up against G2 who are on match point, let's not forget, I said this team runs our region. The team who in spring playoffs might have fallen, but winter 2023, summer 2023, season finals, 2024 winter playoffs, all took championships in the past two years. Four out of those five championships I just mentioned were wins. And G2 once again setting themselves up to go to the grand final and look for yet another. It would lead them up to a very good grand venture into MSI. Now, Dagger, I know people talk differently about G2 internationally, but I'm just going to look domestic for the time being and say that I'm impressed with what I saw last game. But let's not forget that BDS challenged them in the first two. And hopefully with this draft, where would you like to start? Because you could go either side and I'd, I'd just be happy to talk about it. Uh, I don't even think it's a draft decision here. I think it's more of the lane swap again coming through for G2 is the big one. Yeah. So it kind of feels like they've gone, all right, BDS don't really know how to fully play against this strategy. So let's just try and play out the early game. Well, no matter what the draft, it doesn't matter. Just, exactly. It's just the strategy at this point. Yeah, and I think, again, 
Adam is going to suffer if he falls behind because it's, again, kind of the Aatrox syndrome of you want to spike hard in the mid game. You are heavily reliant on your damage to be to be relevant. The problem here, there's a flash. Caps flashes in response, even though Nuke won't have that much damage. But with the Ignite down, I bite my tongue. Caps is going to be in a bit of trouble. Broken Blade Mickey coming in, but will he die before the soldier out? LeBron now flashed on two. They can't get the last tick and they're punished. G2 exploded in the early game again, it's deja vu. That's the side of the map G2 are strongest on, and Labrov just wants to get that last hit to get the kill, but ends up giving that kill across the caps. Caps gonna TP back into the mid lane as well. What the top side is, I know this is. And again, Adam isn't ready for this. Here comes the dive. Level two from Yike just achieved. He burned the flash before on the play, but Broken Blade did not. Decimating Smash, remember, can set up as four members are here. Lebrov is coming up with his top laner as well, but Han Summers just hit level two. So now, Abelios is the champion. Mickey might not be at level one, but the range is there from Calibrum. Lebrov gonna get tagged out. Broken Blade setting up the ghost now. Pop versus two. Lebrov in the middle again. He's gonna sacrifice his life as Broken Blade flashes on out, but still alive. Adam now again zoned out. Cheat. Two Brainiacs at this point. Shao comes in, at least gets broken bladed in zombie form though. Adam doesn't want to step up. Shao dangerous as well. He's level three here on the volley bear. He's got the full kit. As Adam zoned out, but again mentioned, Shao coming in, trying to clear the wave and give Adam back his lane. You see Rakan moving up here as well. Everyone wants to make sure that Adam can at least get some minions on the wave. BB going to TP into this bottom side to try and answer for it. So Ice will get a little bit more when it comes towards the turrets. But again, it's BB being put behind. Only just hit, ticked over to level two. Now the wave is pushing out as well, which means Yike can hit three off Krugs and oh, immediately come back into the top side. Remember that the interaction is with, with these supports. The Hurricane comes out, the Howling Gale rather. LeBrov can go in, there's the engage. Adam gonna follow this up, but Yikes here again. Mickey flashes away, double knock up. LeBrov keeps getting baited, Dagda. He keeps getting baited, man. G2 are not only in their heads, they are mind controlling them. They are puppeteering. Caps gets out too. Shao looking for something. This is insane. I just can't believe it's happening again. Yike versus Shao. What happens here between the jungle wreck site? Shao getting tagged down. That's good damage here. Yike gets sustained, but Sky Splitter helps out, but the damage doesn't register onto Yike. He takes the tunnel out and good he did. Nuke was looking for the kill and Caps couldn't help out too much as the prop is level one and now mid. He's zero and three in this early game. But a lot of that has been trying to protect this top side. And it's G2 again, just feeling significantly more comfortable having that Scion. Just take that step back and go, right, we can look for dives, zombie Scion, we can look for kills under tower. Adam, though, up Ooh. against Hansama, still does a lot of damage in the early stages, so Hansama does have to be careful. Especially if he overheats, and if he gets a harpoon in Han Summer and gets a slow, it could be a kill. Mickey's coming up topside spot on a ward. LeBrov also coming up once again, but Mickey as he zones on out, saving the Howler Gale for LeBrov with the engage, but won't need it, and still, the prop just doesn't get the target down. Early game is still a bit of a disaster. Guess who's back again? And I'll give you a hint, it's not Slim Shady. Shayo's doing a better job though of covering for BDS on this top side. And that's kind of been the main difference maker here. Yes, G2 are coming out on top, but they're not getting as massively far ahead as they did in the previous games. With Labrov and Shale being willing to support Adam, Adam is getting CS, he is getting his gold, but because you've now got three members essentially on the top side for BDS, Adam is starting to slip behind when it comes to experience because he's sharing that experience with several different people. So, yeah. Yike now going to spot oh, out, yoink. get the smice, and he's get one for himself off of that. Hasn't it just been the same story this series though? I mean, Shale will get the other two, so experience will still be gained. Shale this series has been ahead of Yike consistently in every single game. He's had individual experience, but Yike has been sacrificing his experience, his camps, for making ballsy plays like the ones at the top side, right? So again, we see the same narrative come through where Yike had 17 CS. Look at what he's doing, Dagda. He's like, oh, Krugs, but then where? Top again? I think so. As soon as G2 clear out the vision, or maybe just find the pick themselves, Mickey's running at Adam. Gravitum in hand as well. There's the slow. Han Summer might have enough. Howling Gale as well, with Severum too, and the turret down. Adam close to dying. He'll just get zoned out and he doesn't have TP. So G2 again, just forcing away the top laner. Like Adam must be fuming at this point to play League of Legends. Oh man, I'd log off for the night. He hasn't got to play League of Legends. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> He's just been chilling, just like, all right, well, I guess this is gonna happen again and again. Look, Ice again is kind of getting the opportunity to get the level advantage. You can see he's almost level seven in that yeah, bottom yeah. side. He is at least getting that experience, but Adam is again just going to be a null factor. And Shao is slowly but surely starting to farm and getting an advantage for himself as well. 
But if it's just Hans Hammer and Mickey getting to run the map and play yeah. where they want, oh. spread new... Oh, that's oh, not it. Oh, the that's shot really not as is. well. It's really bad. It's a double turret shot as well. Dagda and Caps can start firing away. Ice is here now with the Killer Instinct too. But a mistake that almost costs BDS more here in this mid lane. Broken Blade versus Adam. Looking a bit better for Adam in the meanwhile while we pan down. But I, that's not the first time Nuke hasn't gotten a zero ulti off in this game and has been like a meter or two away from getting the perfect shove, you know? And because you invest ice into that mid lane play, he's then laid on the rotation top side, which means that now Hansam and Mickey get to rotate boss. Okay. And that's where the objective is once more. They're gonna look towards Dragon because they get to push on the bottom side. So Adam, he's even scared to approach the wave. Yeah. He knows that the G2 bot lane is somewhere in this vicinity. It's psychological thriller, isn't it? Like Adam is now conditioned and feared every time he says, wait, where's my top lane going? Mickey and Yike moving in, they're gonna move over a ward, so now they know it's true as Yike starts up the dragon and will actually commit to it as well. You can see Adam just backed again, but he is coming back towards the bottom side. Maybe he's trying to double juke it, or maybe they're comfortable knowing that Ice and Lebrov are getting turret plating up here, but Broken Blade now ulties in. Lebrov having to demolish is helping out quite a bit and them actually getting these turret plates, but again, like Ice is relatively strong, as you can see, as he takes a good chunk off of BB, but and even with the kills and the assists going over to Hansam, it's still even in the gold. But a G2 are still trading up on how they want to look for objectives on the map, making sure they're in a good spot. And Adam... Ooh. Seismic Sense just finds Adam. Here's the collapse from Caps as well. Sidestep from Adam. Beautiful, though. Trey Seeker catches, but yeah, I can't follow that up. Meanwhile, BDS moved their resources top, so that's a win, ultimately. Taking those ultis off of G2 while they were doing the Dragon anyway, and giving Ice some solo gold on this turret. Yeah, that kind of seems to be the game plan here for BDS is, hey, we're just going to try and invest everything into Ice and hope that he is big enough to carry us. Oh, yeah. Essentially a full level ahead of Han Sama. The issue again, though, is G2 are the ones that are dictating how this map is being played around. So Ice going to continue to push in top has Sheo there, so maybe looking for a dive onto BB as this comes through, but that leaves Adam oh, vulnerable. Trying to bait it out, but Mickey stops it in his tracks, still gets a knock up. But nothing else happens. Now we look towards top side here. Broken Blade trying to clear the way, but he's stunned up before doing so. And BB just absorbing the pressure. Shao turns the turret off for the time being and survives. There we go. Kill for Ice BDS's game plan, at least online. Adam should be just investing his ultimate to clear out this wave, though. But he doesn't. And that's the problem. G2 are still getting to waste these waves into the tower. You're not getting the gold or the experiences, Adam, from actually being able to tick down on the gold. BB going to TP back into the top side as well. So again, BB, yes, died. You're getting some gold towards Ice, but Adam has just been completely starved, and it's the same issue. So I'm going to be way more uh, helpful in these regards. Now bot lane tower going to be taken by G2, right as the boy group spawn on the top side of the map. And you've got Ice resetting. So Sheo going to try and quickly take one of them away to deny away from G2, but BB going to yeah. spot us. You have Adam moving up there as well. Let's start blood on Ophelios. Oh boy, as you said, you're right. Adam should have just equalized the wave. Maybe would have slowed this push here. First star of blood wouldn't have gone down. G2 now 2k gold ahead. I'm glad you pointed out the grubs for Sheo as that camera pans back up. Because again, he is still leading in experience. He's still leading in CS. But I think we've now seen from Volibear enough, not just here in this region, but globally. You can control early game. But if you're not able to find picks or land your combo in mid game as well, the Volibear can start doing less and less. We know a simple engage tool from Yike on the Rek site is going to be a very different story, because even though it's not top lane, it still has that element of surprise and the great element of engage with multiple knockups. Yeah, and I think you do have an opportunity with the Volibear in these kind of roaming lane swap games yeah. to look for terror dives as you hit six and try to play off them. But the problem is that BDS aren't used to these sort of scenarios. Like this is a lot of young players that never played in a ro in a lane swap meta. They weren't so born during the lane swap <laughs> meta. <laughs> Whereas G2 are molded by yeah. <laughs> I think in this situation, Shao not able to really oh, use that, but Mickey. The power of Jana at least maybe dying. Mickey running for his life. Yike is here to help, but Nuke is also here. So squishy indeed. A Howling Gal buys him time. Mickey actually going to get away with this one. Shao on all fours to run after the kill, but unfortunately, BDS aren't able to punish Mickey. And Mickey just able to get his out. And a bit unfortunate for BDS. They would have loved that little bit of extra gold, but now Adam once more left alone. Doesn't have the ultimate to try and clear out the wave, so it's more turret plates and more control for G2 on the top.
Taps found Shao though. Stormbringer is available. Which direction does he use it? Nuke is behind him as well. He needs a good Empress divide. He's saving his tools as Stormbringer on the way out. Caps sets up the Weaver's Wall and goes on the right side of it, but stunned on up. Can BDS punish G2? They keep on moving really fast as now with a shove back on LeBron. Maybe the answer is yes. Ice walking in as well though. G2 are a little bit low. Flash over from Caps as he sees the enemy on the horizon. BDS still aren't able to capitalize, but at least they get a summoner out of G2 and a couple of ulties in the process. It doesn't matter. G2 are still getting the lead. They get the flash from Shale. You're still getting flashes burns on G2, but they get the terror plates on top. Deny the wave away from Adam and BB once more two levels up on his lane opponent and, and because he's CS. constantly got exactly he's constantly beginning the CS. He's constantly being allowed to farm into ice. So yeah, ice has a little bit of a CS or experience lead for himself as well. But he's just not going to be able to match up against G2 again. And it's G2 knowing and understanding how to play at the map stage from these lane swap situations. It's funny, because again, you know, G2 making it look like last game and might not be as dominant just yet, but it's building up to a point where now as Yike hovers around the side that G2 are going to take all the turret plating across the map, or at least close to. Yike's still baiting. LeBrov gets rid of the tunnel. Ice is now here with a Kraken. Equalizer used on the way finally here to stop the push in and to delay what feels like the inevitable is who's that man at the top of our screen? <laughs> the thing is though, Adam is using that on the top wave to clear out the wave. Actually, this still may be a dive. Oh, they stop Ice is back. Adam's still back, as you said. He's got TP. Will he burn a frog blade charging into the turret? Ice goes behind, doesn't get knocked on up as LeBrov. Again, the new target, but Mickey though, could be the follow-up as Adam is burning down Han Sama. BDS finally getting something as Yike underneath gets LeBrov. Adam is low and Yike still wants him, but he's in the middle of three people. Ice looking for more kills and he'll find it. A double over to the Kaiser that BDS have been praying to. G2 go over aggressive. They are punished this time. And BDS say you can't keep getting away with this. G2 skipped a step on the setup and it ended up costing them. Adam had used his ult equalizer in top. He had to reset, go catch bot, and Nuke was going to have to transfer himself into the mid lane. Caps could have had that push in mid, but because they don't wait for that to, uh, process to take place, Adam is able to TP immediately back into the top wave. You get a great engage from Lavrov onto Hansama and Mickey as well to keep him set up. And Caps isn't in position yeah. as four members of BDS set up. So yeah, Sheo is slowly making his way here, but this ends up as a four versus four terror type on the strong side of the map because that's where Ice is for BDS. And Ice getting the double kill as well. I mean, Hans scratching the back of his head. I like the way you put it, Dagda. Skipping a step for G2. A lot of the time they can be greedy. A lot of the time they can make silly plays in the early game. And that's one of them. We're not blind. We see where G2 can sometimes be fallible. They might get the dragon here. Might be number two, but I'm now looking at Ice. The new AD carry, the new blood of BDS. I already set up how, you know, a lot of question marks coming into this year. But Ice has been delivering more and more as we've seen him integrate more and more with the roster of BDS. This game, they're going to rely on him to, to get them over the line, get them into a game five for this upper bracket final. Alongside Nuke. I mean, the early game has been hell for everywhere else on Earth, but at least Nuke, at least Ice have been getting the resources. Now, Nuke will also get himself solo turret plating gold up in this top side. And also, the setup from Labrov is going to be key for BDS if they want to try and fight back against G2. Yeah, good point. You have the Rift Herald there, but you're going to have to look for these engages with Labrov. Find ways to get around Mickey. The desk highlighted how good the Janna is at keeping the Rakan at bay with ults, with Howling Gales, with everything in her system to just keep engage off of your carries. But if you can find this control in mid where you can shove it in, start to set up vision, open up angles of attack for Labrov, this is where BDS can find their success because it. this is now the gold lead drifting back into an even state. Yeah. And BDS, thanks to Rift Herald, actually have some control on the map. Oh, however, though, let's pause because Caps has just Weaver's wall that off. Ice with a good ulti, but is it intelligent enough? Broken Blade just TP'd in, takes the shutdown, but still the shutdown nevertheless. LeBrov caught out as well. One map move again instigated by Caps. If this guy can be hardware across the map, he will. And it's just before BDS were about to get their bot and top wave in order. They immediately look for the play on mid. And Ice just that little bit too far forward. Didn't have the flash and gets punished incredibly well by G2. And as, as I was saying, you're about to get control of the map here for BDS. They're pushing out bot. They're going to move the rumble and the volley into mid lane. And G2 
attack before BDS get into position as Ice goes a little bit too far forward and has nowhere to escape thanks to that wall from Caps. It's an insane wall, insane timing. Look <laughs> at even Ice is laughing like, oh, what class. Do we just talk about Caps again? I don't know because... Yeah, it's know, all roads lead to Caps. The Aurelian Soul game, the Talia games. It really feels like he's having a great series. And even though he can't be, won't be the most explosive at time, like Han Summer, for example, last game, like Caps' setup, positioning has always been good. As now we need to pause onto Adam. The pick's there. Seismic Sharp doesn't connect, but Mickey is here to help out as well. Adam getting the G2 top experience as he runs for his life. I mean, it is going to be a trade on the other side of the map, but Caps gets a kill. At least BDS, though, in multiple angles, getting mid and getting bot is pretty good. It's honestly worth the kill for those two towers. Is going to let you quite a bit of positioning here. Yeah. Caps should be able to get this top tier one, at least in some sort of response. But as long as you get back out onto the map as BDS to defend your mid tower, I think you're in a relatively okay spot here. Dragon in just over a minute 50 is really going to be where BDS, with now two, you will have two and a half items completed for ice. They will be able to try and play around ice. But I think the problem is, as you say, Caps very much controls the side lane wherever he shows up with the amount of success he's had in these early stages. And it's great to see Caps falling back into these old rhythms because when we look back at this time last year, a lot of the conversation was, where is Caps? This isn't the same Caps. He's making mistakes that he wouldn't do. But yeah. now, this year, it feels like Caps is firing all cylinders and he is the mid laner you have to beat if you want to try and host that trophy. And there's versatility right in winter. I remember seeing the LeBlanc and seeing the laning phase being so clutch. You know, this time around, it's a bit back and forth because of the map state. But Caps as well, very versatile in the mid game, really using this Talia well. Uh, I mean, we, we talk him up all the time, so I feel like everyone gets the point. But for G2 after that pick, they move back into some of the gold lead. There's almost a Rabadon's there for said mid laner as well. I just want to gear us up because Dragon's in 50 seconds and it's third one for G2 as Broken Blade moves down. So much vision established by BDS in this bottom side, but we're going to fight almost immediately. Nuke needs to, may even need to just TP in early, but G2 trying to keep as much pressure on that side lane. Cap's going to shove in that wave. And if you end up having that wave start to approach the tier two tower for BDS, I think that's when G2 are going to try and pull the trigger. But 30 seconds now, Caps pushed at the wave. He's going to be able to walk down to join the rest of his team. But you can already see the amount of vision that has been established on this bottom half of the map. Okay. Already by Labrov just moving in as Broken Blade was pushing out that bot end. So this actually makes it quite difficult for G2 to approach. They may just give up this dragon in lieu of trying to get position for Baron Vision for push for Caps onto the top side. But maybe with the resets coming through, they feel like they can take it. By the way, 45 seconds to Baron if that comes into a part to play here for this long trade. Teleport now going to be burned. As you said, the setup from G2 can start with Broken Blade. His ulti in could be everything. Equalizer as well for Adam. Watch that quickness from LeBron. Engage so interrupted he doesn't find it. Hans Summer dodges the equalizer as Ice versus Hans is the play I'm watching and Ice takes him out. The dragon ignore that from time because Broken Blade is getting burnt alive as well. With Terminus, I shreds those tanks. Caps running for his life. Shao on all fours yet again. Mickey zone controlling while Nuke still has an ult. He still has not flash. Stormbringer still wasn't out. G2 got erupted with two quick kills going over to BDS. And remember, the Baron is now up. And Nuke never used his ultimate. So yeah. G2 try and commit into this play. Nuke can look to get access to the backline. Labrov and the Azir. Looking to try and play keep away from Yike. They need to keep him out of the pit. Seismic Sharp, though, they're going to burn down Lebrov. They're trying to zone away. I mean, Yike is still going to get the kill. But now as the tunnel comes through, Yike in smiting range. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. BDS get the Baron. Ladies and gentlemen, wipe the sweat off your brow. They get away with it. If they were going to 50-50 that back though, I swear to God. But this doesn't feel like a 50-50 when it comes to these team fights. Also Ice true. is a monster. Stepped away from BB. The all, the interrupt onto Labrov doesn't matter because Ice immediately just walks onto Han Sama. And where's Han Sama's team? They're yeah. completely focused into the middle of the pit and Ice is destroying their AD carry. And at that stage, Caps just needs to run for the hills. There's nothing that they can do. BB's been taken out by how big Ice is. This AD on hit. Kaisa will do work against the tanks. Broken Blade getting shred. You know what? Like, I was going to say, Dagda, the Kaisa build needs to be called up because it is destroying, as you just mentioned. Terminus second here. Broken Blade is tanky. But against that build, 
not enough. You give Ice time and he's going to run away with it with now the Baron power play. BDS have the makings to move to a game five. Now with Navori quick blades picked up by Ice as well. And BDS have never taken G2 to a game five. It would be an absolutely incredible moment if they would be able to do it. That's and it is off the back time. of just being able to, ooh, nah, bro, being able to protect Ice, keeping him in check. Adam is just coming out of the base, wave pushed in. BDS trying to establish vision in this bottom side so they yep. can get the wave starting to shove in and then they can look for the plays on towards the turrets and use that advantage. G2 desperately trying to keep them at bay and stop them from getting that deep vision. Nuke is the one channeling up with the wave. Broken Blade hovers out of Fog of War. Caps for the pick. Shao not going to give it over to him. Han Summer now joining in. This is a two item of Felios. He ain't where Ice is right now. But look at what BDS are positioning. They're but essentially trying to cut off this part of the map oh, yeah. because they've already got the push coming here for Adam on towards the tower. So B you have to try and walk the entire way around here as G2 if you want to try and get access to and that turret. Time. And you don't really have the opportunity to. So Adam going to take the mid lane tower and G2, BDS are playing so far back they can't engage. And look at top as well, Dagda. Further to your point, the wave is getting set up so they can transition across the map for BDS once they deal with bot side. Lebrov continues to zone up and further to your point, now that Adam's done with mid, he joins up with bot he's got equalizer too and for g2 i mean his own control is good but the damage is starting to rack up from bds the next wave is now here equalizer zone it starts good knock up though redemption may sucks, though. just barely keep the terror alive Mickey X managing to get the knockup onto Labrov and Nuke, so the damage that BDS were trying to play with, not quite there. So even with the Baron, even with those opportunities, the short range coming back to bite BDS, and they just can't quite get that bot tier two. Redemption used, but as I said, it sucks for BDS because it healed so much. It was Mickey's first item. And once it's used again, G2 went to full HP. Now, Baron has run out. BDS got themselves a push mid. They got a little bit down bot side, but it's not a game-breaking play. We still got Dragon to move to Soul Point in a minute's time. Remember, G2 still run that race. But Vice actually is he tags on. Remember, this is a three-item Kaiser. Killer Instinct. A great way to nuke out the enemy AD carry, depending if he's got backup. And this is where you always have to be careful, because this is where G2 start to get vision down and behind you they'll put mickey very far forward to try and get a ward down to get a tp for bb find these flank opportunities but at the moment it's still very very shallow control for g2 which is a godsend for bds because again they've littered so much vision in this bottom side jungle of a dragon excuse me sorry in 30 seconds mm -hmm. they should be able to push mid and play off of that vision and again just look to disengage keep g2 out of the fight and just find and protect ice at all points in this engagement is Al Gaib. Ice must be protected. If he can get them to game five, what a game five would be with the series we've had so far. Man, it would be sick. TP'd topside. Oh, yeah, G2 are just giving angle. up on it. They want to try and look for the play on towards Adam. Try and crack open the game through that tier two on the top okay. side. So if you end up over committee members like a nuke TP to the bottom side, Cops and BB just TP and ult into the rest of the dragon. So Adam, I think he just ult the wave. Yeah, he goes, equalizes the wave to make sure that you can't contest, contest this as G2, but they may just be able to tank it up with the Scion. Nuke is pushing in though. I mean, in the bottom side, can G2 get a counter play here? Hunt Summer has to grab at him as Yike hovers around. Sheo is coming just in case, but look at the damage from Nuke. Some we haven't talked about this game. He's 1-0-1 one, and, one and still means business. As Topside Tower at close going down for G2, but BDS committing more and more members, now looking for that trade and with the Dragon as well. That's still so good for BDS here as we round towards the late game. The tower will be taken. Caps has ultimate to try and join in. Adam has the TP. His own equalizer are going to be up relatively shortly, but with Caps leaving now, BDS, they have to, they have to move back. Baron up and available in just 45 seconds, but because G2 were the ones that ended up committing towards that top half of the map, a lot of the vision is in their favor. So it's going to be BDS trying to get control over Midwave and fighting for that to then shift the control into River and in towards the top side jungle of G2 so they can make sure that G2 aren't going to just turn and burn the worm. 30 seconds till it spawns, by the way, less than third item picked up by Han Summer. Worth noting the Infinity Edge comes through. So we have what Aphelios needs to thrive. However, let's see if Ice gets it back in before it's 10 seconds. The ants are probably not, so they are on speaking terms. Even though it's such a big gold lead individually for Ice, 
the fact that three items are being matched here on an Aphelios is a big deal that G2 might have to play towards in this coming fight. Caps just got spotted on this vision ward that's oh, just he? at the back here, so they know already that he's on it, which is why BDS immediately started up. He doesn't have TP. He has Look to use the it. Weaver's Wall to get in. Lavrov trying to play keep away. It's gone. Equalizer onto the wave though. Adam won't have the ultimate if this is a fight for BDS. He won't, but the engage starts off. Here comes Caps running through. I mean, the engage onto Shao. Stop with the Stormbringer. Look at the front to back. Han Summer with red and blue. He's got AoE now. Red and white. Everything becomes all right. Quickness from LeBron. The backline engage is good, but no one's with him. No one is with him. Han Summer again, spinning the wheel. Nice, nice does it! Nuke as well! He's sinister! He's disgusting, but also beautiful at the same time! In Ice we trust, in Nuke we praise, and in BDS we'll take us all the damn way! BDS, despite the early game being all over the place, despite the fact that they tried desperately to catch up with G2, are able to weather the storm, and Ice comes out on top the hero that they needed to push BDS into position where they firmly have control of this game. I think it's over yet though, Dagda, but still for BDS, it is one step closer, isn't it? I squealed like a child <laughs> just watching this engage play out. I know, he was a little bit nervous because initially, okay, cool, Shale ults away by space. Adam is getting poke over the wall thanks to Electro Harpoons. But then I see Nuke on the top of this fight gets hit up by BB and that was the go button for everyone. But that's when Lavrov jumps immediately onto Han Sama in the back line, gets the charm. Nuke then goes golden. So Han Sama hasn't actually got to hit onto targets in this oh. fight. And then Nuke goes in At with his story. And finds the play, cuts down Hansamo where he stands, and Ice has been able to hit that entire time. What a great coordination from BDS in that fight. Ice did it. Ice did it. Nuke did it. The carries at BDS. I mean, Nuke has been having a year as well. Don't forget, as now chasing down BDS G2. Aren't done yet. Equalizer onto two and dodges away from the seismic shove. Adam gets out. Adam gets out. It's beautiful as Han Summer now has to help deal with LeBron on the side who kills Yike alongside Ice. BDS with a man advantage. They've got the Baron, remember, as well, and they're on the right side of the map running to crush in. Adam has TP, he's gone back to base. I wasn't sure if he wanted to TP in behind G2, but G2 trying to cut the wave. Nuke immediately goes to bot lane. It's gonna be a 3v4. Caps, do you stop the reset to join in? No, he goes back to base. So Adam gonna slowly make his way up towards mid lane. BDS still gonna try and keep G2 off of this tower. They wanna crack this mid lane turret as Nuke goes for the bot side. Caps does have the wave clear though. Don't forget, Seismic Shove dodged away from by Nuke and the wave now gone. He has to wait for the next one, but going towards mid, BDS trying to run this in. Bring us to all five games. Testing out G2 wasn't in the script. Caps. It wasn't in the story. Caps surviving also for Nuke. Didn't feel like it was meant to be there. G2 now with an open inhibitor. It's still not going to be taken down. BDS are running away. Wait, 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 wait. TP is stacked. The point out is coming through. Nuke still gets knocked up with the Empress of Ide. Now used. BDS are in a choke. Caps with a shove. Doesn't connect though. Adam is running through. Still alive as Caps' is damage must be looked at. Equalizer down. The Howling Gale. Great. Yike with a knockout. G2 team fight. No. It's ruining the plans again. BDS has sent packing as the Infernal Dragon now spawns right in front of them for the taking. Ice is still alive though, and G2 used a hell of a lot to get in there. Shaya can spike this Stormbringer, no. It's an objective bounty taken away. Shaya gets shoved back, LeBron with the quickness, but he splits the pieces. The range there is Han Summer thinking about it. The ulti over range, it's Gravitum, it's Ice. Now gonna be stuck in place. G2 are looking for this 2v2, or the 3v2, it's unfair advantage. Ice and LeBron won't get out. LeBron is next. And they always find a way, Dagda. How does this team keep doing it? They have so many tools to get into the backline of BDS. The TP on that singular ward that wasn't swept out by BDS. Nuke takes a ton of damage off of Yike. And then Nuke doesn't really know where to go. He doesn't have the sliding glide to get out of here anymore. So has to walk out with the rest of the team. But that sets up Yike to get access to the backline. Oh. They get at him as he was already trying to buy space in that front line and then it becomes the 4v3, and Cap steps up once again. Labrov tries to find that way to get into the back line, but it's a dis It's just as Shao needs to go in to try and look for the steal. But it, it didn't need to be this. You could yeah. have just given the dragon. 
And G2 punish again, a small mistake for BDS. And especially when Nuke's ulti is not updated, that tool in the last fight really made the fight. You know, that Azir Empress divide for months now has been kicking butt and taking names. When it was down, G2 saw the glimmer in the eyes, and I hate to say this, I hate to be a cop out. BDS, I'm setting it up for a game five, but there's just this small thing in me after watching that, after gold coming back, and after Soul Point now being achieved with Baron in a minute's time that says they've got Nevelios at four items, they've got a Talia at four items. Their tanky frontline is still becoming annoying, especially when you've gone GA here for Ice so he can survive the fight at full build. There is still that maybe for G2 that it still ends here. But for BDS's sake, for the viewers' sake as well, they need to close this out, Dactor. They need to find one more fight, just one more fight. And with those death timers and the open inhibitor mid, we go the distance. It has to be the Baron fight, though. That's what you're looking for here as G2 to try and shut BDS out, or maybe if BDS can sneak it, they can finally put a nail in the coffin that is G2 in this game. G2, though, sneaking several members into position. Broken Blade has already managed to get into bot side as they drag Nuko to keep him with the rest of BDS, okay. but Caps knows that there is no vision on this bottom side, so he's trying to see if he can get the wall in. And now BDS immediately, they want that TP from oh. BB. They will start up the objective. They need ice here though. Ice is the damage on this Baron. It goes down hella quick for G2. Will it be a flip to the side of the series? Who knows? Caps comes in, shoves there. It is a flip! Yike takes it away. Fails the flash though, hilariously, but LeBron helped to get out until he re-engages back on in. Hunt Summer is red and whiting though. Nuke Salty comes out later. No! BDS, you were the chosen ones! You were the chosen ones! And you've betrayed us! G2! Managed to get into the pit. Labrov tries everything to keep Yike out, but Yike would not be denied. And G2 now, when all seemed gone, when all hope seemed lost, they find that one moment. Is it over, Dagda? Is it over? 30 seconds for mid, 20 for top. Ice Labrov and Chair have to defend out of their right mind. G2 with Baron crushing on in. The belief of BDS able to take us to a game five is now lost. The Nexus turret dropping down and they're falling like flies. G2, much like water still being wet, are still Europe's champions. Moving to another grand final. This team is the region. G2 are inevitable. It felt like Game 5 was on the cards. It felt like BDS had found the secret sauce. But they just cannot find a way to close out and G2 just sneak the victory. Man, a well-fought series in the G2 way. Let's not forget that early game from multiple games. The lane-swapping meta that came out of this series is nuts. I truly wonder if it follows through. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, you can vote for your key player of the series at LEC on X, by the way. Broken Blade, Caps, or Han Sama? I was saying in the series, oh, straight away, I think that's Caps. Broken Blade had some yeah. insane games, but again, Mr. Consistent, the best mid of the West. I don't care. I'm, I'm in LEC now. I don't care about <laughs> NA. I had that rivalry. The best mid of the West? Yeah. Until Yappa comes in and says otherwise, but... That's his, that's his job to do. Caps have been here for ages. Look at him. The legend of the LEC continues. And for G2, they will advance on to our grand finals. Whereas when I'm looking across at BDS, yes, they are going to be disappointed that they couldn't pick up the win here today. But by God, if I'm Fnatic or Vitality, am I shaking? This was oh, yeah. such a strong performance from BDS. The early game was rough, but they still tried to match incredibly well. On the grand scheme of things, their macro massively improved when you look at where they were this time last year or even over the course of the start of the split, so, yeah. or start of the year. And now we just have to find out who they will be going up against next week because Fnatic, Vitality, going to be facing off tomorrow uh, in our lower bracket. Uh, maybe Vitality or, you know, Fnatic can break the script. Maybe BDS again can have another chance at the BO5 in the grand final. Again, they're not out, they go to the lower bracket. As I said in the cast, they were the chosen ones. They betrayed us, Dagda, because oh, so the script was there to go to a game five. The script for G2 not to be consistently in the grand final. Although them hearing that is probably like, hang on a minute. <laughs> That's not a nice thing to say. <laughs> You've had enough.
No, but uh, I mean, getting challenged here in the series is another good sign of life regardless. Mm -hmm. You know, if BDS can make it to the grand finals, which means, you know, G2 now in it, they would get MSI as well with the most points. Uh, that would be insane. So, yeah, uh, again, an insane way to end the series. Thank you for being part of it as well. Mm -hmm. Being part of my yeah, as well. <laughs> We're going to throw to an interview on stage with Caps and Mickey X to round us out. Thank you so much, guys. Not any Caps and Mickey interview because I'm such a huge fan of what you do on the Rift, but off the Rift as well. And I, I've been meaning to ask you how you do all these Caps recaps with Caps. So let's do one live if you want, asking questions to Mickey. Let's go for it. All right. So welcome, everyone. This is Caps recaps, of course, with Caps and Mickey. Uh, and we're standing here today, finalists now of the LEC Spring, uh, taking down BDS 3-1. Uh, how, how do you feel about the, this, this the last game? <laughs> Um, I have my own microphone, thank you. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's okay, but, uh, it's okay. Yeah, that last game was definitely intense. And also, like, the whole series, they were getting a lot of barons, mm -hmm. but we were just, like, holding on, praying to outscale. And at the end, we outscaled three games, so that was great. And Yag stole the baron, and we just won the game on the spot, so that's, uh, of course, very important. Uh, it was also some, some lane swaps coming in this game, uh, these games, so that's something that hasn't been seen for a while. Uh, where comes, does the inspiration come from? <laughs> uh, I got to swap in LPL one game. All right. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it's just like a good strategy. With all the up and coming talents, new young players coming in the LEC, we're a bit more older, so we know back in the days how lane swaps work. Maybe they're yeah. a little bit dizzy because a lot of the games were really lane swapped. We got good advantages from it and we avoided lane. So yeah. That's pretty nice. Teaching the kids how to do it. Though I have a question on swap lane. Why is it back? Because we saw NIP doing it this morning. I had a hint that you come up with this as well today. Are we going to see more swap lane? And why do you think it's that strong, Caps? Uh, well, I, yeah, I mean, they did look pretty strong. Yeah. Uh, the three games we swapped, we won. The one we didn't, we lost. <laughs> so so yeah. it looks like a strong strategy. <laughs> uh, not sure what happened that game, but <laughs> uh -huh. uh, I think aside from that, uh, it's it's definitely like strong if you if you can if you know how to execute it, you know. All right. And it's sure we're gonna see other people try it out. Maybe tomorrow, maybe next week. Exciting. About Aurelion Soul, you were the first player in the major region to get a pentakill with this champion. Are you OP or is Aurelion Soul a bit too OP as well? <laughs> it's the year of Dragon after all, so that makes sense. Yeah, I mean for sure Aurelion Soul is, is very yeah. strong right now and uh, especially when we get to the super late game, because these games just went very, very late. So, so then it, it's, it's fun when you can just fly the whole map, your E is, is the whole screen. It's, it's a lot of fun. Enjoyable. Do you have any last questions, Caps, maybe? Uh, how do you think we'll do at MSI? <laughs> OK, we're going to send it over to PGL. We have one week to get ready. We'll see if G2 can come up with good answers at MSI. Shocks over to you in PGL. Thank you, guys.